Okay, good morning learners. Uh, today I want us to look at functions and graphs. So in this topic we are going to be looking at three graphs. The first graph we are going to be looking at is the hyperbola. The second one will be the parabola and then your exponential graph. Maybe to give you an idea of what is happening with regard to the hyperbola. The hyperbola has a standard form that one has to know. The standard form of the hyperbola is always given as y equals to a over x plus p plus a q. This is the standard form of any hyperbola, where in this case, p x equals to minus p will give us the equation of the vertical asymptotes and where y equals to q will give us the equation of the uh, horizontal asymptotes but again you must be very careful if you come across a graph like this one say y equals to ax plus q over x plus p let me put it this way this is another form of a hyperbola but now you need to be very careful one has to be able to convert this form back to that form so that one is able to see the equations of the asymptotes now let me make an example while i'm on this one let us say you come across y equals to x plus one over x minus two and the question says to us determine the equations of the asymptotes now it's clear that from this graph here this is the hyperbola but how are we going to see or how are we going to determine the equation of the asymptotes one, we must be able to convert this form back to that form there. How are we going to achieve that one now? We are going to express the numerator in terms of the denominator. So what are we going to do there? We are going to say y equals to. So we are going to the numerator, but we are going to the denominator. So we are going x minus 2. But remember, we do not want to change the numerator. It means we must have the numerator of x, a, a, denominator of x minus two. I need to add what to go back to x plus one. It means I can add a three. Why? Because the negative two plus a three will take you back to a one. It means I have written the numerator in this form, but I have not changed the numerator. Then you return the denominator is is u bani u x minus a two. Remember what we are trying to do here. We are trying to convert this graph here in this form back to that form. Now, let's see what is happening. Remember, in mathematics, we know that if I have A plus B over C, I can say this is the same as what now? As A all over C plus B all over C. Now, let's apply the very same principle here now. I'm going to group this X minus 2. Then I'm going to say this will be x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. I'm applying this principle now. Plus, this is a plus 3. This is still divided by the denominator, which is what? x minus 2. Now, do you realize that the x minus 2 divided by the x minus 2 will give us a 1? Plus, this is still that 3 over x minus 2. Now, this is 3 over x minus 2 plus 1. Now, Buga, we are born in Oguti. We have now achieved our goal to say, move from this form, Ibek Lian Lela, so that you are able to tell us the equations of the asymptotes. Now, what are the equations of the asymptotes? Now, looking at this graph, I can say, y equals to 1 is one of my asymptotes. But here, play asymptotes to y equals to 1. It is this 1, the value that is here. Nesanya corner. Now, if I'm saying y equals to 1, remember I have two asymptotes. There's a horizontal asymptote and there's a vertical asymptote. This one here will be your horizontal asymptote. Now, let's find the vertical asymptote. You take this, everything that is there, the x minus 2, you let this be equal to 0. You then say x equals to a 2 is going to be your vertical asymptotes. Remember, what are the asymptotes? These are the lines where your graph will, those are the lines, the graph can get is but it will always approach. It means one thing that we have covered so far is that 
You can either be given in that form or in that form. But if you are given this form, it is easy to see the asymptote once it is back to that form. Therefore, you must convert. And this is our example there. Once a CBL move, I will say I was born with all. Oh, this is my asymptote, this is my vertical asymptote, and this is my horizontal asymptote. Again, on the hyperbola, one need to be very careful here to say, if I am given the hyperbola, I must be able to give the domain, I must be able to give the range. Now, let us look at the standard form. How do you state the domain of that graph, that one? The domain of this graph will say, x is an element of real numbers, but x cannot be equal to a minus p. Why am I using a minus p if I'm given this graph in this form? Because the minus p is my vertical asymptotes. It means when I say what is the domain in this graph, you're going to say it will say x is an element of real numbers, but my x cannot be the vertical asymptote. In this case, it's a minus p. So now let us go to this graph, the one that we have here. So if I were to say to you, what is the domain of this graph that we have here? What is the domain? Don't stress. Apply the very same principle. What is going to be my domain here? It's going to say x is an element of real numbers, right? But what is my vertical asymptote now? Then you say, but x agagwazi ubutalingane no ba no two. What is this two? This two are vertical asymptotes. That is my domain. But a range, you to understand a range, you apply the same principle. Let's go back to this one. My range will say, y is an element of real numbers, but y may not be equal to the horizontal asymptote. Now, what is my horizontal asymptote in the standard form in this graph? It's a Q. Therefore, y cannot be equal to a Q in this case. Now, let us go down here now, Cecilia. It means if you are looking at this graph, what is going to be your range? My range is going to say, refer to this one, y is an element of real numbers, but y cannot be equal to what? Now, the horizontal asymptote. What is my horizontal asymptote? It's a one. It means, oh, why? No one. It means, it means, la, I can say, we have a case like this. If you take a look at this one, you have an asymptote at y equal to 1. You have an asymptote at x equals to 2. How do you represent your asymptotes? Must you have to be You use broken lines. As y is equal to 1 is my horizontal asymptotes. You go to your Cartesian plane. We know what these are our x-axis and these are our y-axis. So, if you pull up a corner with Cartesian plane, you can have a corner no y or 1. Surely, you have to go to 1 and have a pair. But because this is an asymptote, you lie not to y equal to 1. Now, to draw an asymptote here, I will use broken lines. It must be a line which says y equals to 1. That is my asymptote, a horizontal asymptote. But what about my vertical asymptote? Saying that the Cartesian plane, you have to check where is x equals to 2. Now, you have to Then I will draw a vertical line. Got to vertical line one mungan who broken to indicate these are the asymptotes. Uma kota wutige. Uma ngabusun and teganje. You can always indicate to say where your asymptotes meet. The pobetinta na corner, we have a point. Ungalbiza ngwa nige lila point. Remember, every time we write a coordinate, the coordinate is always x and the y. It means now, la pa wutlangana ba, wutlangana u x e ubani. A two, no y o bani o one. So see this point that can occur as in two two am. Ngalbi is ang o two and what here and the one. That is the coordinates of the asymptote. You see, na kamuga agi question. It's again plan be going again. Determine the coordinates of the x-intercepts. Usu na equation vel. How to find the coordinates of the x-intercepts? No manga bu lu putlo bole grafo na. To find the x-intercepts, we make y zero. To find the y-intercepts, we make x be zero. So if you are to take this one and you are to find the x intercept, it means bang we go x in thing fage ban napaya u zero messing sorry velga ban lap ka y. Then we are graphia you plot that point. Umaso fun x intercept, uzo gwenza banu zero manje u y and work out the value of what? 
of x. Then you will have an, a coordinate. From that coordinates, you plot the coordinates, then what you do? You draw a graph here. Again, while on the hyperbola, it is very important that you understand because with the hyperbola, we have the axis of symmetry. There are two lines of symmetry with the hyperbola. There's a one that is increasing and there's one that is decreasing. Now, I'm saying to you, there are two lines of symmetry with hyperbola. I am. But the question will tell us which one are they looking for at that particular time. Let me give you an example. We are saying here, we have an equation which says y is equal to 2 over x minus 2 plus 1. This is the equation we have. And the question is saying to us, let us determine the equations of the axis of the symmetry. Determine the equations of the axis of the symmetry. Y is equal to x plus c. Y is equal to minus x plus c. Now my question is to you, this is the one that has a positive gradient. But here, it is a negative gradient. The question is, what is the question? What is the question? What is the question? the axis of the symmetry that has a positive gradient. So if they say they want the one that has a positive gradient, it would mean this is the one you are looking for. If they say they want the one that has a negative gradient, it means this is the one that they are looking for. Now, you are going to ask the values of C. Gizom tula kanja nige no C. Labo C aba fan. Let me just say this one is C1 and call it one C2. Just to indicate which these values of C are not the same. How to find this value of a C, this one intercept of this axis of the symmetry? You are going to substitute a point. Ilibili podi lu substitute a yo. Ila po guru la kona ini na. Amasim. La pe klangana kona masim totako. That is the point to substitute. Liti nigi po nami gili substitute a la pa. Liti ge 2 and a 1. It means, umang funa le axis of the symmetry that is increasing or that is a positive gradient. What am I going to do? I am going to substitute this point. Go y in the farabani, one. Go x in the farabani, two. Then I can solve for c. Now, what is going to be the value of c in this case? If I move a two, I'm getting a negative one. It then means the equation of this axis of the symmetry that is increasing. Give it a hand to increase. Go be current according to na. It positive. Is it the equation of the symmetry? Y is equal to x. And then C1, I'm replacing C1 with negative 1. Right. Then, we are here. This one, that is a negative gradient. Since we have a negative slope, you substitute the very same point. Go Y, I'm putting a 1. Go X, I'm putting a what? A 2. Then I'm solving for what now? For C2. So what is going to be the value of a C2 here? The value of a C2 will be a 3. So what is the equation? The equation will say y equals to negative x plus what? Plus a 3. Now take note. Do you realize good? we have two equations here? We have this one which says y equal to x minus 1. And we have that one which says y equal to minus x plus a 3. Between these two equations, this is the one, this is the axis of the symmetry that is increasing in a positive slope. This is the axis of the symmetry that is decreasing. This is a negative what? Slope. It means when you are to draw these two lines, they will always pass through where you corner corner, lapa go intersect corner amanina, ama asymptote work. Usu guti, let y equal to x minus 1 is a rua la panai. Na lenye eti y equal to minus x plus 3 is a rua wena e otwa. Uzo wana ngano guti yona yip enye. Le e increase I, sorry, le decrease I, il a negative gradient. Kotwa le e increase I, il a positive gradient. So every time the question says to you, determine the axis of the symmetry, and then I specify, you work out both. But in the, ex in the exams, they will normally say, determine the axis of the symmetry that is increasing, or determine the axis of symmetry that has a positive gradient. Then I want you must know, okay, 
which one am I looking for at that particular time? Now, I want us to look at this example while in Sapuma Konang Sezala. This is one of the questions that came out in one of the years. I cannot recall the year. 